I'm here at Sweet Creek Farm Market out on Troy Highway with the owner, Mr. Reed Ingram. Hey, y'all. <laughs> we really thank you for letting us come hey, and do this. And uh, so what we're going to talk about tonight is just a little bit about fresh produce and what you want to look for that's in season. And the best place to do that is at Sweet Creek for me. Uh, wherever, and for me. <laughs> <laughs> and wherever you may be watching, if you could search out and look for like a farmer's market or somewhere that offers fresh in-season produce. So we're here tonight and just going to feature just a little bit and I'm going to ask Reed a few questions and let him talk and so y'all don't have to hear me. <laughs> you get to hear me enough. Hey, you sound a lot better than I would. <laughs> so you want to give us a few tips, Yeah, Reed? sure. Yeah. Uh, one thing, let's start with our tomatoes. Uh, we buy our tomatoes as local as we can. These right now are coming out of Sand Mountain. So mount, uh, tomatoes come north, move north from Florida and then they go into Alabama and then North Alabama and then Dillard, Georgia and and they're just you know you need to make sure what you get how it was handled before you buy it because if it's been refrigerated or gassed it's not any good it's not worth eating and you know I don't like going to a grocery store and getting a tomato because there's been a lot of trucks pull up here and say hey we want to sell you some tomatoes and not knowing where they're from and they've been on a refrigerated truck at you know 30 to 40 degrees uh, or a little above freezing Right. And so they're, they're ruined at right. that point. So do not put your tomatoes in the refrigerator and make sure you buy them to where they have never been cooled or refrigerated before. Your big boxes are all are going to be cooled because they have to be under a different refrigerated truck. They ship other things with them. So nine times out of ten, they're going to be, have been ruined when you get them. Right. So gassed. Right. right. So uh, another thing is, you know, right now we're in uh, the season for winter squash. Uh, spaghetti squash, acorn squash, all kinds of squashes. We've got, uh, this is local, it's local squash, uh, comes off of North Alabama and Georgia. We have to buy a lot out of Georgia and North Carolina because this time of the year with elevation is cooler. But we need to make sure that we find it, we, we make sure, you need to make sure as well, that you're buying it from a good farmer and it, and it has gone through a test and not a lot of herbicides put on it. We are real particular what we buy and who we buy it from. So our zucchini the same way. This okra was grown a half a mile away from here. It's really good okra and it comes in various sizes. It's an heirloom okra. It's a, a, a very good good seed. We, we provide the farmer with the seed uh, nine times out of ten this time in our local produce. So we know what he's putting in the ground and we know how he's handling it. Mm -hmm. He's a really good farmer. Uh, <laughs> peppers are coming out of North Carolina, but they are coming right off of the off of the uh, vine and um, the plant. And we know where they come from. We know that they're not coming out of California or Vietnam or, or overseas somewhere. A, dar a lady by the name of Doris grows these peppers, <laughs> and she's a sweetheart right outside of Asheville, North Carolina. Really good product. <laughs> and the same way with these jalapenos, uh, they're they're grown by Doris as well. And these little copper peppers. Uh, they're grown by her. So make sure that your uh, vegetables are fresh and make sure there are no herbicides on them and make sure they've been handled right before you get them. So it's a really big deal to, to make sure that your corn hadn't been laid on a, on a, in the back of a truck with a bunch of chemicals and hauled across country by a freight company. We bring, I, I literally bring 90% of the produce that comes in. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll go to uh, the farm and pick it up and in North Carolina or Georgia or, or across town or in Verbena. Uh, Scott uh, Penton grows a lot of stuff for us. We contract with him. Uh, we grow in a lot of our own pumpkins. Uh, I'm going to show you some of those in just a minute. I'm going to let Brooke talk to you for a minute. But one thing before we get back on that, before we go to the pumpkins, we've got some fresh peas here. These are, are butter beans, uh, fresh butter beans, local. These are uh, butter pea. Uh, it's a really good pea and they have uh, been very, uh, they've grown very well, very sustainable, local, mm -hmm. and these are Alabama. And the same way here, these are pink eyes, and we got them by the bushel, but make sure you get fresh peas, no matter where you get it from, and make mm -hmm. sure you ask where they came from. Mm -hmm. Say, where are these from? You don't want anything out of another country, because a lot of times, a lot of fertilizer and water that they use may be coming from a waste management in another country. So a lot of uh, vegetables that are grown overseas, whether it be in Asia or Vietnam or, or wherever, uh, you don't want any of that. Because right. Mexico, same way. Uh, and, and a lot of your southern 
countries like that, mm -hmm. Argentina and stuff. And you know, and that's one, that's one thing that people don't think a lot about of is the water source. You right. know, that whenever you're thinking about organic produce and things of that nature, uh, the water source is a big thing that I've never thought of even before that could affect you know the quality of your produce. Right. So. And like this tomato. It may be 90% water. So where was the water coming from? And what chemicals did they pump in it? And was it growing under plastic? And, and what did they pump it with? So we like to know where this tomato comes from so we can tell our customer. And we want them to make sure they have good, healthy produce. Mm -hmm. We great. grow a lot of our squash and stuff, but we're out of season right now for us. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, it sure doesn't feel like it as hot as you know oh, what Oh my here. goodness, it's so hot. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Okay. Well, we appreciate you, Reed. You and you and I'll come right back. I'm going to go get some okay. pumpkins and take a look uh, Take a look around, and um, I'll be right back. Okay, good deal. So I'm just going to go through and show you. Y'all, they just have tables and tables of all kinds of fresh produce. Uh, you can get anything from bananas and eggplant here to citrus to uh, potatoes and onions. Uh, it's just great. Uh, I mean, this is my favorite place in the world. And I love coming here and you can come and I'll show you. They've got just, you wouldn't believe the pumpkins they have. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'll show you just a few. This is just one little area of their pumpkins. And now Reed's got a couple here. He's gonna show us some special pumpkins. All right, so we grew this pumpkin and this is a Georgia Bulldog. Georgia University has done a lot of research on this pumpkin. It came out of the, out of the uh, rainforest out of Brazil. And it's an heirloom pumpkin, uh -huh. and it's a really edible pumpkin, and it's, it holds up good. So you could take this pumpkin and put it in your house, which I did last year, just to see if it would hold up. And uh, I kept it in my house for nine months. Really? Yes. Very good food source. <laughs> a lot of people come by and buy this pumpkin because it's a it makes very good baby food. Mm -hmm. It makes very good pies, mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a longevity, long shelf pumpkin. Right. Just leaving it just like this, long as it's not in the rain or the sun and the elements you can put it right inside well it's beautiful too i mean it looks like something you'd buy at hobby lobby that was fake it's a <laughs> it's an ornamental pumpkin yeah and it's uh they grow every one of them is like a snowflake every one of them is different different, different mm -hmm. color different shape everything that's great and that's this cool. one is i'm gonna put this down and this one is a uh, a long island cheese a lot of people call them a buckskin but this is my favorite pumpkin as far as eating mm -hmm. uh it's uh very soft flesh um uh, it's uh, it freezes well, it cans good, and it, and the taste on it is amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of people from from Asia that come by and buy this pumpkin and request mm -hmm. this pumpkin. Mm -hmm. uh, they they eat it a lot over there, so mm -hmm. it's a good food source and a very very high in vitamin source, oh, higher than great. a sweet potato. Oh really? Yes. Oh wow, that's great. It's a very good food source. Well, Reed, I thank you for hey, this, no, thank and you I promise I wouldn't keep you more than no, five minutes. No, no, you can keep me thirty minutes. <laughs> uh, but but it, you know. Anytime you eat something, think about it, yeah. what you're eating, especially in a restaurant. Don't be scared to ask them, you know, where did this come from? Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, uh, if you know it's out of season, it, it, you know, we're doing a lot of hydroponics now, mm -hmm. a lot of greenhouses, mm -hmm. and uh, we sell a lot to restaurants like La Jolla, mm -hmm. so, uh, because they know it's going to be a good product, mm -hmm. and we've checked it and measured twice and cut once, mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> so do the same when you go to a restaurant. Ask them where it came from. Right. Right. Not just that it came from Walmart, but we get it from the farmer's market. Not all the time that you get stuff from a farmer's market. Now, we're a farm market. Mm -hmm. Farmer's market when a lot of people just bring whatever, and you've got you've got uh, a lot of foreigners set up booths out there, and they come from Mexico and mm -hmm. other places in Guatemala. Mm -hmm. um, don't, don't just buy what's pretty. Buy yeah. what's the best. That's right. That's right. And, you know, when he talks about asking at a restaurant if you – because I have a lot of people who watch who are in other states if you don't have somewhere that is a local sourced farm market if you go to your farmers market don't be afraid to ask those vendors there where their things were grown ask them if they grew it yeah because if they bought it somewhere at another farmers market and they're breaking it down which about 70% of that is you know mm -hmm. in, in some of your farm markets especially in the out of season right they'll bring it in but right. Just ask. Don't be afraid to ask. That's right. But everything here, I would eat every day. So mm -hmm. I'm very convinced that everything we have is very healthy. So just ask. Good deal. Well, I know I love shopping here. And guys, if you're local, be sure to come out to Troy Highway to Sweet Creek Farm Market and see Reed and Karen. Uh, and just tell them that you saw us on, saw it on the buttered home so they can laugh with you at me. <laughs> 
but we appreciate you watching with us and if you have any questions just put them in the comments or be you know shoot me a, a direct message and i'll get back with you but we thank sweet creek and we thank reed and karen for allowing us to come and we didn't have to hide <laughs>